In the documentary, this film is not yet rated, audiences learn the guidelines for what content is permitted to be displayed in films rated G through R, and what qualifies them for the infamous NC-17 rating. In this film, we will go through a three-step process in order to meet criteria deemed appropriate for high school filmmaking. Now how is such a task approached? I decided to interview Poway High School staff members in order to gain a more clear and practical understanding as to why students must censor the content that goes into their films. The way I would operate would be to err on the side of caution. So I'd want to say if, if there was a documentary on, on what language would be appropriate and words that would be considered abusive or vulgar, that, um, that if vignettes were produced, that those words be beeped out. I think you're dealing also at a, at a micro scale, you're dealing with this at the school where you have school rules that are in effect, and then you have socially acceptable or not acceptable rules. To the school rules, I would imagine what guidelines the school rules is parents' expectations, school board expectations, um, job preparedness, how should people conduct themselves within a job place. I would imagine people that go to work for eight hours a day act a little bit differently at work. Alright, so here's what we know so far. Inappropriate dialect within a project is strictly prohibited. If it's against school rules, it's a no-go. So step one is no offensive language. This includes and Now moving on from step one to step two, if there's pain, there's no game. This deals with the ideal that displaying harmful acts in a student film is not acceptable. These acts include drinking and drug use, gratuitous violence, and dangerous behavior. For alcohol and drugs and things, if there's some sort of documentary produced uh, for our kids or for schools, uh, I, would, I would ask, again, kind of erring on the side of caution, that, that any props that were used, like bottles or things of this nature, uh, that they didn't have labels on them, uh, that, that kids weren't shown consuming anything. Even though it might be water, that they're actually consuming, I wouldn't want um, it to be shown that they're consuming water because some might think they're consuming alcohol. So uh, I would, again, I'd, I'd ask to err on the side of caution with those things. I'm not sure if you'd need censorship or not. You know, I mean, I think the censorship would obviously, the, the example you gave earlier about drinking, you know, you, we can't have that alcohol, but you could definitely have like the red cup and everybody associates that with alcohol. I think with teens, you guys are smart. You know the difference between right and wrong. You know the difference between what's reality and what's not, you know, for the most part. You, you've got to take all those things into mind, but you've always got to consider, am I putting someone in harm's way? Is it illegal? Spoiler alert! After step two is step three. Where is the line drawn in artistic or self-expression? There are some things, and there are federal court cases, um, and the language is such that if, if something's brought to school that can cause a substantial disruption to the school day, um, then that can be restricted. And that comes from a federal court case uh, years ago where in the South, um, uh, a child wanted to wear a jacket and on the back of the jacket was a Confederate flag. Uh, well, uh, the school officials wouldn't let them wear it for fear that it would cause a substantial disruption. There would be, you know, a major uh, fight on campus. So. The federal court said if, to schools, public schools, if it's going to cause substantial disruption, uh, then, then it can be restricted. So you have to imagine some of these art projects, for some, it's artistic, it's expression, it's acceptable. For others, it's not. And that's where we get caught in the middle sometimes, and so the easy thing is to err on the side of caution. Let's recap. Step one, no offensive language. Step two, no potentially harmful behavior. And step three, the line between what's artistic expression and what's inappropriate. Though these are all obvious rules to student film, understanding them is 100% necessary and teaches guidelines for a future more professional approach to careers and social interactions. Happy filming!
until my turns blue on that to the as long as I want a mew That's right, it's okay, everybody does it anyway Come right over, sit right down on the ground It's gotta be